Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walad and today's writer of discussion under LGBTQIA plus literature is Christopher Usherwood. Christopher Usherwood lived from 1904 to 1986. Do you want to look? How does he look? How did he look? That is the young Christopher Usherwood. Complete name, Christopher William Bradshaw Usherwood. He was an Anglo-American novelist, basically born in England, but later in life took American citizenship. All right? So an Anglo-American novelist, a playwright, a screenwriter, an autobiographer, a diarist who had this constant habit of writing everything in his diary. And, you know, Christopher Usherwood was the cousin of novelist Graham Greene uh, from his mother's side. Also, there was a time when he wanted to become a doctor, but then he left medical school in just six months after joining it. <laughs> Good he didn't. Of course, he was great as a writer. So, first thing. Christopher Usherwood and Edward Upward. The photograph you're seeing here is of Edward Upward. Don't get confused. He's not Usherwood. He's Edward Upward. Who is he? At the boarding school where Christopher Usherwood studied in Derbyshire, England, he met his lifelong friend, Edward Upward. Both of them together invented an imaginary English village of Mortmere. An imaginary English village of Mortmere as described in Usherwood's fictional autobiography, Lions and Shadows of 1938. So now you know which is the autobiography of Usherwood, Lions and Shadows of 1938. And what is the fictional village of England that they created together? It's Mortmere. Okay. Now, another important meetings that Christopher did in his life, which actually changed his life. First, with Auden. In 1925, around Christmas, Usherwood reunited with his prep school friend, an old school friend called W.H. Auden, such a famous author. Through Auden, Usherwood was introduced to the younger poet Stephen Spender. So many writers coming. Usherwood, Edward, Upward, W.H. Auden, Stephen Spender. So you can say Usherwood met Auden. Through Auden, Usherwood met Spender. And it was Spender who printed Auden's first collection called Poems of 1928. Will you remember it? All right. Now, what is the Auden group or the Auden generation or the 30s poets? This was the most exciting literary group, a new literary group that was created in England in the 1930s, which included a group of British writers and Irish writers. Which writers became a part of the Auden group? Obviously, W.H. Auden. With him, Christopher Usherwood. With him, Stephen Spender. With him, Edward Upward. Then Louis McNeese. Then Cecil de Louis and Rex Warner. All of them were the part of the Auden group. Very famous in their writings in 1930s England. From this group, was created another group called Mex Ponde Poets. So four poets began to be called as Mex Ponde Poets. This term was coined later in 1946 by Roy Campbell, a South African poet and a literary critic. Basically, take it like this, that Roy Campbell in 1946 brought together four poets together and called them Mex Ponde. It is a blend of these four poets' name. Mex stands for Louis McNeese. SP stands for Stephen Spender, AU stands for WH Auden, and DAY stands for Cecil Day Louis. So, who are the part of Max Ponde poets? Louis McNeese, Stephen Spender, WH Auden, and Cecil Day Louis. What was common among these poets? They shared left wing views, and of course, they produced very important works in 1930s England. Take. So you came to know about the Auden group today. You came to know about Max Ponde poets just now. Now let's talk more about Usherwood. Can you tell me the first novel of Usherwood? It was called All the Conspirators of 1928. 
subject of all the conspirators is the great war between the old and the young or you can say a clash between the old generation and the young generation of england after world war 1 how the old wants to cling to the older values how the young wants to remove from everything and move ahead the old and the young clashes in all the conspirators of 1928 the first novel by christopher usherwood okay Berlin years. Berlin, Germany played a very important role in Christopher's life. How? In 1929, Usher Wood joined Auden in Berlin, primarily not for writing, but for the sexual freedom that the city offered, unlike England. Because Auden himself stated, quote, to Christopher, Berlin meant boys. That is where the LGBT connection comes with Christopher Usherwood. That is why we have included him in our LGBT literature series. All right. So it was here in Germany that Usherwood began an affair with a German boy. I'm not writing the name of the boy, but then, you know, uh, later in Usherwood's life, he actually went to England and with his boyfriend, but then uh, the boyfriend could not get a place in England. They went at other place, tried to live there, but then the boy was captured by the Germans. He went to fight in the German war. And Usherwood then became a pacifist. He said that although my boyfriend now fights for Germany, I will not kill him. All right. And that is how Usherwood's views changed about war as time passed on. All these are like war poets, okay? They've seen the wars. They've seen the deaths. So, Abhi, just remember this, that he went to Berlin in 1929. He stayed there. He used to visit London. So, aisa rehta tha, years between London and Berlin for Usherwood. It was here that he completed his second novel called The Memorial or The Memorial of 1932. The memorial by Christopher Usherwood is the story of Eric, who returns from the war, and his father's friend called Edward. How Eric learns about love, sexuality in Berlin, okay? So the story of Eric is discussed in the memorial of 1932, which is the second novel of Christopher Usherwood. Since we are talking about Usherwood and Auden, you should know that Usherwood collaborated with Auden on three very important plays. This question has come in net. You should know. So the collaborated plays between Usherwood and Auden are, know their names, The Dog Beneath the Skin of 1935, The Ascent of F6 of 1936, and On the Frontier of 1938. Good enough? Can we move on? Yes, we can. Hey, you saw the photographs, right? Look. Look at the pointer. I'm pointing at Usherwood. So this is Christopher Usherwood and this is W.H. Auden. Aage birthday. Important works of Christopher Usherwood. Lions and Shadows of 1938. Goodbye to Berlin of 1939, which is a semi-autobiographical novel. Christopher and His Kind of 1976. Christopher and His Kind is very important. It's a memoir which actually carried Usherwood into the heart of the gay liberation movement. So a novel connected or which helped in the gay liberation movement is Christopher and His Kind of 1976 by Christopher Usherwood. Very important work, a collection of two novels by Usherwood is called The Berlin Stories of 1945. The Berlin Stories of 1945 consisted of two novels. First, Mr. Norris Changes Trains of 1935, the US title of which became The Last of Mr. Norris. So they are the same novels, Mr. Norris Changes Trains or The Last of Mr. Norris. And the second novel is Goodbye to Berlin of 1939. Together, they were published in the U.S. under the name of the Berlin Stories in 1945. Do I make sense? Yes, I do. What is Goodbye to Berlin all about? It talks about a disintegrating Berlin when Adolf Hitler was rising to power. Berlin's poverty, unemployment, increasing attacks on Jews and communists, pleasures of nightlife, nightlife which ignored all this. Unemployment, poverty, Jews, communists. 
This nightlife in Berlin's cafes, bars, and brothels, all of this is discussed in Goodbye in Berlin of 1939. And as I told you, Usherwood was a diarist, kept his dear diary. So he gathered the material for these two novels in his personal diary, his first-hand experience. Okay. Now, Goodbye to Berlin became the basis for a very famous play called I Am a Camera of 1951 by John Van Druten. And I Am a Camera further became the basis of the American musical Cabaret of 1966. <laughs> Goodbye to Berlin inspired I'm a Camera. I'm a Camera inspired Cabaret. Just take it like that. A flowchart. Let's move on. Again, years between London and Berlin. Usherwood created his very famous character, the most famous fictional character of a girl called Sally Bowles. In his 1937 novella, Sally Bowles, and also in his 1939 novel, Goodbye to Berlin. Who is Sally Bowles as created by Usherwood? She's a young, eccentric, not very talented English nightclub singer living in Berlin during the Weimar Republic period or the German government Republic period of 1919 to 1933. Usherwood based this character of Sally Bowles on a real life character of Jean Ross. Jean Ross was a young English woman with whom Usher would had briefly shared a flat. They had lived together for some time. Let's move on with more works of Usherwood. You know, he actually wrote a film in London called Little Friend of 1934. And on this Little Friend, Usherwood wrote, like he took the basis of the Little Friend as the basis of his novel, Praetor Violet of 1945. So Praetor Violet of 1945 was a novel which was inspired by Usherwood's work on his film, Little Friend. Subject of Praetor Violet, Fictional first-person account of filmmaking. You know, he calls it fictional. He, in fact, calls his autobiography fictional. But then so much of what written in it is his first-hand experience. That is how Usherwood is. Look, Lions and Shadows, what I was telling you, it's here. Lions and Shadows of 1938 is the fictionalized autobiography of Usherwood. His basic education, adolescence, education years in 1920s, his development as a writer, Lions and Shadows is called a Consul Roman or an artist novel, published in 1938. Important. Next, Usherwood and Auden together traveled to China in 1938 and they wrote a novel called Journey to War about the Sino-Japanese conflict. Journey to War of 1939 by... Usherwood and Auden. Here, America will come in the scene. How he became an American? He was an English writer, right? They returned to England. From China, they returned to England through the United States. They visited United States, both Usherwood and Auden. They decided, why not emigrate to the US? And they did it in January 1939. So now, after England, that is London, after Germany, that is Berlin, let's talk about Usherwood in the US, in the United States of America, from 1939 onwards. Usherwood lived in Hollywood, California. Finally, he became an American citizen. He actually gave up his British citizenship and became an American citizen in 1946. In America, he befriended Truman Capote, a young writer who would be influenced by Usherwood's Berlin stories, and he would recreate Sally Bowles in his novella, Breakfast at Tiffany's. I will make it clear, Breakfast at Tiffany's is a very important novella of English literature. It was written by Truman Capote, an American writer. Truman was inspired by Sally Bowles, the character created by Usherwood, and Truman took Sally Bowles for his novella, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Easy. Now, Usher would travel to South America with his live-in photographer partner, of course a male, William Bill Kesky. So William Bill Kesky and Usher would travel to South America where Usher would wrote The Condor and the Cows, a South American travel diary. It's like a travelogue published in 1949 in prose. It's a prose style. Understood, na? Easy. 
आगे बढ़ते हैं we have to talk about dawn when we are talking about chris chris and dawn have been named together even till now chris and dawn chris and dawn they are partners lovers homosexuals christopher asherwood and dawn bacardi lived together until christopher's death look at their photographs you know now who is christopher asherwood the one in black who is dawn bacardi the one in white they had an age go age gap of 30 years almost 30 years dawn bacardi was younger to christopher asherwood it was a point of criticism people criticized it that you know you can't have a relationship gap of so many years but they lived together story of chris and dawn so chris chris is christopher rashavur dawn is dawn bacardi they met on valentine's day in 1953 they lived together until rashavur's death during this time asherwood created more works like the world in the evening of 1954 down there on a visit of 1962 and after christopher died bacardi became a very successful artist and his portraits of the dying asherwood became very well known very very renowned he actually drew the dying asherwood because he was together with him yes next works Asherwood wrote the screenplay of another film called The Loved One Evelyn. Does this ring a bell? My last video was on Evelyn Waugh. Evelyn Waugh had wrote a satirical novel called The Loved One which was based on the American death funeral system. So on this a movie was made in 1964 the screenplay of which was written by Asherwood. Okay? another important work by asherwood a novel it is called a single man of 1964 it depicts the life actually one day in the life of a gay aged middle aged gay english man who is a professor his name is george george is grieving after the death of his lover jim a single man 1964 novel by asherwood which was made into a film in 2009 thik very important christopher asherwood and his connection with vedanta the law of hindus the vedas the philosophy of hinduism asherwood was connected to it how in america henry fitzgerald heard and eldis huxley important writers introduced asherwood to the vedanta society asherwood was so influenced that he became a dedicated vedantist himself he was initiated into the vedanta society by prabhuananda who was prabhuananda a disciple of ramakrishna asherwood's guru head of the vedanta society of southern california that is all prabhuananda was so for the next 35 years of his life asherwood collaborated with his guru swami prabhuananda on translations of various vedanta scriptures from hindi from sanskrit to english and the, you know he actually translated a work the name of this work is bhagavad gita the song of god of 1944 bhagavad gita the song of god of 1944 this book has an appendix which consists of an essay by asherwood titled the gita and war theek and also you know asher would actually would deliver lectures in hollywood to famous personalities based on vedanta these lectures usually were readings of papers written primarily by swami vivekanand look at the connection very important work based on vedanta is asher woods my guru and his disciple in which he talks about his relationship with guru pravananda here is guru pravananda on the screen my guru and his disciple published in 1980 i to the end christopher asherwood's demise in 1986 before that he wrote a memoir about his parents in the year 1971 he wrote kathleen and frank basically the story of his parents kathleen belonged to a rich family frank was a soldier how they met during a musical concert the year must be like 1890s they met they married frank went to a war he was killed there kathleen was a widow throughout her life kathleen gave birth to christopher 
And all this story was told through letters and Kathleen's diary. That's Kathleen and Frank, memoir of Usherwood's parents, published in 1971. It was in 1981 that Usherwood was diagnosed with prostate cancer, prostate cancer, and he died of this disease in 1986, aged 81. His body was donated to medical science at UCLA, UCLA's University of California, Los Angeles, and later his ashes were scattered at sea. Look at Christopher Usherwood. I like it how we move, you know, with the journey of the author, talking about his important works, important events of his life. I do it to make the lecture interesting and also to make it easy to remember. If I only give you the names of the important works, you will not be able to remember it. But you will remember it better if we connect it with the events of that writer's life. Do you understand? That is why I actually make a story of every author. I hope it helps. If it does, what will you do? Of course, like our video, drop down a comment, share this video with your friends and relatives. It will be a great help. Notable works of Usherwood, you should know them. A Single Man, Goodbye to Berlin, Lions and Shadows, Mr. Norris Changes Trains, The Ascent of F6, The Berlin Stories, and the primary themes of all his works was or is identity, sexualism, sexuality, and human condition. By Usherwood. Bye to all of you. This is Hina from Team Walat. Take very good care of yourself. Bye-bye.